I am Anil Kumar. Here is summary of the chapter on measures of spread. This video is for my students who are taking up test in the coming week. And I hope many will benefit. In the very first page, I have written a few topics. We are going to discuss standard deviation, quartiles, interquartile range, box and whisker plot, percentiles, and z score. You have already done mean mode and median in the previous unit. Now I'll take up examples from the previous test papers. Some of them have been copied here as a part of my video in this particular list. You can actually pause, copy these questions, try them out. So this one is to calculate the standard deviation and percentile from the given data and also to understand how to find data around the mean, right? Which is plus minus one standard deviation as part B in this question. Now to solve such question, obviously we'll be making some big tables. I may make them in two different columns as shown here. Uh, then we'll take up questions based on quartiles, right? As shown here, just to understand their basic definition, right? <coughs> and percentile ranking. Then we'll also make box and whisker diagram or plot with this data. Calculate z-scores from raw data and to relate scores with z-score. We'll take up a few examples based on measures of spread as shown here. You can always cause, uh, pause the video and copy the questions to uh, do the needful. So that is just to give you a glimpse of videos which you'll have in this particular playlist and if you're interested <coughs> you should actually explore more. I have few on calculating mean mode median of group data also which we did last time. I'll provide you links for the same right. However, we'll take one with kind of group data for calculating standard deviation in this series. Okay, so let's begin with the very first page, which is talking about measures of spread and what kind of formulas are we going to use in solving all the questions which I just shared with you. This first page can be treated as your formula sheet and a good place to start. I hope you enjoy this journey and learn as we move along. When we talk about measures of spread, then we are basically trying to figure out the answer of this question. How closely the data clusters around it's me. That is the question which we are going to answer, right? So normally we don't use any particular type of mean. We just say center. So this is the question which we are always answering in this unit. Perfect. Now standard deviation is a very good parameter. But before that, let's understand few related words which is deviation. <clears throat> so, when, so when we say deviation, that means basically we are talking about each element. So elements in the data will be represented by the value x. We will say how, what is the difference between data element and the center, right, or the mean value and the mean value. Now, whenever we talk about mean, we could have a population or a sample. Perfect. So in case we are talking about population, that means we are taking each and every element into consideration, right? In that case, the deviation will be x minus mu. We use mu 
for the average or the mean of a population. In case we are talking about a sample, then we say x minus s as the deviation, right? So that is one formula which you should remember, which is deviation. Now let's talk about standard deviation, right? So standard deviation I'll be writing as SD. Now similarly, based on these two, the standard deviation is also having formulas for population and sample. Standard deviation sigma is equals to square root of sum of squares of deviations, right? That is to say <clears throat> x minus mu whole square over total number of elements in the population square root. If we are talking about the sample, in that case, I'm sorry, this should be x bar. In, if we are talking about the sample, then the standard deviation will be square root of x minus the deviation, right? Whole square over n minus 1 square root. So in sample, you take very few elements. So there is possibility of error. To reduce that error, we actually do n minus 1. The total number of elements in the sample take away 1. Perfect. If there are, let's say, 10, you will divide by 9. 10 minus 1. Right? So those are two formulas. We also use the word variance, right? So for variance also, which is equals to square of standard deviation. Let me write down here uh, standard deviation square. So we don't have these square roots for variance. Perfect. So that is variance will be for population. Variance will be sigma square and here it will be s square. Correct. So I hope these formulas are absolutely clear as far as standard deviation goes. Right. Now remember this thing that standard deviation will provide you how closely the data is to the mean, clustered around the mean. That's what it is. Perfect. A large standard deviation means it is dispersed widely. A smaller standard deviation means it is compact. Correct? So that's what it is. Normally, uh, within plus minus one standard deviation, you will get 65 percent data that is normal just to give you an idea right normally now let's talk about quartiles and interquartiles so we're done with standard deviation that much is enough for you now quartiles and interquartiles now when we talk about median that is the center value right when we talk about quartiles then Think like this. Uh, let me just make one here so that it serves the whole purpose. So that's the whisker. <clears throat> right? So this is the box. So we call this as a box and whisker plot. So what you see here is that somewhere in this box will have the median median in terms of quartiles is represented by q2 so let me write this as q2 here q2 so q2 is median for us middle value perfect so the whole data is arranged in increasing order divided into four equal parts right so that you have exactly same number of elements in each quarter in each quarter perfect so and to make this box as we have seen that most data lies within this box so we say let this be the first quarter first quarter means starting from here to there so these are actually limits of your quarters do you understand so limits of the quarters mean that uh, the first point here also is included and that is your lowest datum. Similarly, that will be your highest datum. 
right? So the highest value in your data set will correspond to that end of the whisk, correct? Then after arranging, you have to divide into four equal parts. If there are total, let us say, uh, let me take population. Let's say if there are n elements, right, in your data, then you have to find position by dividing n plus 1 by 4. <clears throat> so that means one quarter. So if you do that, what you get is the position for Q1, the first quarter, Q1. For finding Q2, you have to divide it by 2. So we get the center value, is that okay? n plus 1 divided by 2. And to get the position for the third quarter, let me write down here Q3. For the third quarter, is end of the third quarter, you have to divide it by 4, multiply by 3. So n plus 1 divided by 4 times 3, 3 fourth. So what we have done here, to find the position, so these are not the value, these are the positions in order, right? These are positions. So we get these points, correct? Now Q1 minus Q3, the whole thing here is called interquartile range. So interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So let me write down this formula also for you interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Now some data you may have elements which are far away, right? <clears throat> we call them outliers. Let's say we have a point here, right? Some point here. So these are called outliers. Now you could have more than one. Okay, no problems. How to figure out whether something is outlier or not. Easy calculation is that outliers <coughs> will be beyond this range. So let me give you the range. On the right side it will be, now let's talk about outliers. So on the right side the outliers will be Q3 plus beyond which is greater than let's say Q3 plus 1.5 times interquartile range. Perfect. And outliers on the left side, on the left side also we could have, right? They will be lesser than Q1. So they will be less than Q1 take away 1.5 times interquartile range. So those elements will be outliers. And if you do not consider the outliers, make a diagram like this, it becomes a modified box and whisker plot. So this will be modified. So I hope you are there with me on this, right? So these are a few definitions which are very important to understand. Quartiles. We'll take up examples when all these points will be absolutely clear to you. Correct? <clears throat> now, so, so you have understood all this. Let's talk about percentiles. In percentiles, we divide the data into 100 parts. That is what we do, right? So the data may have 20 elements, for example but we treat them as divided into 100 parts, correct? So divide data into 100 intervals, you can say, that have equal number of values, correct? So if I say K percentile, if I say K percentile, it means what? So when I say K percentile, that means that the Kth element, Kth element is what we are talking about. So number of elements before that are k percentile and number of elements above are 100 minus k percent, right? So we say, look at the kth element 
and if you see below then it means that it has k elements below k percentile do you understand so it means that the k percentile of a data are less than or equal to kth percentile correct so if i say 90 percentile right that means uh, 90 percent of the data is below that for example let me take an example actually let's take numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine right so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and just to make simple calculation we'll include 10. so we have 10 elements right so this is a very straightforward example if i say 90 percentile if i say 90 percentile that means this position that means this position do you understand 90 percentile so so we have 90 percent below this position perfect and we have 10 percent above this position that becomes 90 percentile so in our case 90 percentile will be what in our case 90 percentile will be let's say 9.5 in between 9 and 10 correct so the elements number of elements below are 9 9 out of 10 is 90 percentile 1 is above 1 out of 10 is above so that becomes your kth percentile so i hope it's clear now right it's becoming difficult otherwise so that is the percentile which we talk about right when we have more questions this point will be absolutely clear right <clears throat> Now at the end, let's talk about z-score. We'll see more about it in distributions and normal graphs. But to give you an idea, z-score is a number of standard deviation. Let me write down here. z-score is number of standard deviations that a data, so we talk about raw raw data that a data element you say datum so when we say datum that data element we're talking about right is from the mean that is what z score is and the formula for z score accordingly depending on what we're talking about will be so z score will be equal to Data element is x minus this mu, which is the mean, divided by standard deviation, if you're talking about population. And z-score for a sample will be x minus mean divided by s, the standard deviation. Okay? So z-score is representative of how far away the data is in standard deviation terms so if you cross multiply so what happens then you if you cross multiply if you cross multiply you get z squared times standard deviation is equal to deviation <clears throat> okay so so i hope this part is clear so z score times standard deviation is the deviation so that gives the deviation is the number of standard deviations if z score is let's say two twice standard deviation is same as deviation so is the number of standard deviations that a data element is from the mean deviation is from the mean do you see that deviation is from the mean is z score is standard of deviations away from the mean perfect so z score helps you normalize the whole data so if I say that students from different class, we give their Z scores, then we can perfectly match uh, their ranking, correct? So that is the importance of Z score.
So with this introduction, I hope you have refreshed all what you've learned in measures of spread. And now we'll take up the test questions from previous test papers to review. And I hope by the end, you all will be absolutely ready to take up a test on this unit. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share your comments and views. If you like and subscribe, that'd be great for me. Thank you and all the best.